So this is your new Connects controller from Bryant. Uh, this is the main screen that you'll normally see when the unit has been sitting and you haven't touched the thermostat for a little while. It's all touch screen, so just touch anywhere on the screen and that brings you to the main screen. So a few different features here on the main screen. Up here in the upper right hand corner is mode. You have auto, heat, cool, off, and fan only. Currently we're in the off mode. If we select auto, we have a heat to temperature and a cool to temperature. So what it's going to do then is it won't let it get below 68 or it won't let it get above 76. It'll run either heating or cooling, uh, whatever it needs to do to keep it between those two temperatures so that way you stay comfortable. Typically here in the Midwest, we're either going to be heating or cooling. We don't usually use both systems in the same day. So right now, since I've already done the startup on the unit, I'm just going to put it to heat and we'll get the house heated back up here. So once we've selected a mode, then we just use the up and down arrows to select the temperature that we want. So I'll just bump it up to 70 degrees. As soon as I change the temperature, you can see that it brings up another little sub-menu. It's asking me, do I want to hold this temperature until a certain time today? I can select whatever time I want. The times are a little bit off right now because we haven't set the time or the date. We'll get into that in a little bit. The other thing that we can do is we can touch the hold button over here and we can go back to a normal run in the schedule which we'll set up at a later time here in a few minutes. If I push hold here in the middle that's a permanent hold. That'll hold that temperature then until I tell it to do something different or somebody tells it to do something different. And then of course hold until is the back the, the first option we had so you can tell it what time you want to hold that temperature to. So for right now I'm just going to choose a temperature and then we'll select that. <clears throat> Next thing over on the, upper, on the upper side of the screen in the middle is our date and time. So we can manually adjust the date and time or once we connect it to Wi-Fi it will automatically update just like a smartphone does. So you won't ever have to set it for daylight savings or anything like that. It'll automatically update and it'll get the date and time from the server so we wouldn't even have to set it. Uh, since the Wi-Fi comes up here a little while later, I'm going to go ahead and set the time right now. So that way when we're going through the scheduling, the timing is more precise, at least until we get to the final Wi-Fi setup. So just select 5.15 p.m. February 27th. and 2020 and save that. So it'll save that time. I'll enter in the time zone so we're in central here and now I will I'll go ahead and enable time synchronization. The time will still be saved but when we get to the Wi-Fi setup it's automatically going to get that information from the server. Last thing on the upper side of the main screen is features. Continuous fan, we always recommend to run that on at least low. That's going to help balance out your heating and cooling uh, between the different levels of your house, so between the basement and the main floor. <clears throat> it gives us our actual humidity, so we've installed a humidi uh, humidifier on your system and this is actually controlling the humidity, so we no longer have a humidistat down in the ductwork. It's all controlled, sensing the room air right here at the thermostat. And then my evolution, it says not connected right now. That'll say connected once we go through the Wi-Fi and we get you registered online. Then that'll be communicating with the server. So my evolution, that's the server, is what it's talking about. Touch and go buttons. These will make a lot more sense here in the next couple of steps. But if you just touch on one of those, this is a real quick way to change. If you're deviating from your schedule, you can tell it you're doing something different without having to reprogram your scheduling. So let's say it's a weekend when you're normally home, but you're going to be leaving for the weekend. You just touch away and you can say permanent hold so it's going to keep it at whatever temperature you designate for when you're not home until you get back home or until you get onto your mobile app and tell it to go to your home temperature so it's comfortable when you get back home. So that brings us into our main menu. I'm just going to go ahead and push home, turn the heat back up to 70 and we're on a permanent hold again so that way we'll be heating here while we go through the setup. So menu button first thing we come to is comfort profiles. Temperature and fan profiles we'll set up first. Now these should look fairly familiar. These are our touch and go buttons. So this is where you would go through and select when you're home, what temperature do you like? You know for heating, cooling, so we select those temperatures and then we save it. When we're away, 
Of course, keep the fan on low all the time, at least on low, and then set the temperatures, uh, whatever you like while you're away. So you can just change whatever temperature you like. Um, and we'll get into more cost saving stuff uh, that this Connects controller and this Evolution system is capable of, uh, where you can kind of play with these temperatures a little bit and get the maximum savings. And then of course wake, so this would be after your, your sleep temperature. So if you set the temperature down while you sleep like a lot of people like to do, this would be between your wake up time and the time you would leave on a normal basis to go to work. And then sleep temperature of course, fan on low again and then select what temperatures you like while you're sleeping. Humidity and fresh air profiles. So this is gonna be for when we're home. Like I said, with the humidifier on the system, uh, what I normally recommend is between 30 and 50% humidity. Some good things to watch out for are moisture on the windows and doors. That would indicate that we have too much humidity and we would wanna turn this down. Um, on the other end of that, if it's too dry on carpet, we'll get static shocks dry sore throats, bloody noses, things of that nature, that would indicate we would want to bump it up a little bit. But I usually start people off at about 35%. That seems to be a pretty good average starting point for most people. Now cooling humidity, with our Evolution uh, air conditioner, it's up to five stages. So when we stage that down into its lowest stage, it's really working on getting rid of humidity more than cooling the air. So we can tell it what we're trying to dehumidify the home to. So. Right now it comes factory set at 52%. I usually leave that. That's a pretty comfortable number, a pretty comfortable target. Uh, this option allows it to overcool by up to three degrees trying to get rid of humidity. So if we're at 60% relative humidity, it's really hot, humid day outside, um, and we've already reached our target temperature of let's say 72 degrees, in order to try and get that humidity down, this would actually let it go down to as far as 69 degrees before it shuts off the cooling system. But it will stage itself down so we don't overcool too frequently. Uh, it's gonna be just an option to really try and help keep the humidity out and keep the home comfortable. So when we're away, we can set what we want the humidity to do. Uh, I typically leave the humidifier run even when we're away still leave it at that 35%. Again, you might have to play with it a little bit uh, based on the comfort uh, that you find specific to your home. And then cooling humidity, I tend to leave this set to off. So it's not even watching the humidity when nobody's home. It's basically, it's only gonna run based off of temperature, not really humidity. Uh, the only time I change this is if people have uh, pianos or uh, certain plants are really sensitive to temperature and humidity changes, then I would leave this to where we keep that humidity level down. Uh, but for most cases, we just let it go off a of temperature when nobody's home because nobody's around to feel the benefit of getting rid of the extra humidity. And then vacation, I usually leave the humidifier and the humidity sense off on the cooling as well when we're gone for long periods or longer periods of time. Last thing in comfort profiles is window protection. So if you can see uh, where it says window insulation, so if it was a really old drafty house, we would have this down here. This is just to protect to keep from getting too much humidity into the home. Uh, most homes, you're gonna fall in uh, into about this range. We started out here. I usually start people off here. Just know that if we are getting moisture on windows and doors, we would wanna come in and turn this down a little bit until we get rid of that excess humidity. <clears throat> Next up is scheduling. It's very easy to go through and set up a schedule. There's a few different things you can do. You can upload a schedule from a micro SD port here on the bottom of the thermostat. You can view and edit it if you already have something set, but initially I'll usually just go through the guided uh, schedule setup. Uh, and just to give you an idea of how to go through and set it up, I'm just going to put all days the same. It's just going to ask you what time do you wake up. So we'll just say 6.30. Somebody's home all day, no. So we're gone for work by eight o'clock, I'll say. And then we're back home by five. And yes, we want a different comfort profile when we sleep because typically people like it a little bit cooler while they sleep. So we'll just say a bedtime of 10 o'clock. Something to remember on a newer thermostat like this is on an older programmable thermostat, you used to have to uh, cheat it, you know, one way or the other 15 to 30 minutes. These are adaptive, these learn the heating and cooling trends of the home. And if you want it to be 72 degrees at 630, it knows 
how much sooner it has to start before 6.30 to get at that temperature. So when your alarm goes off, your feet hit the floor, that's the temperature it's going to be when you want it. You don't have to compensate for it. It's adaptive. <clears throat> and then the last thing in the schedule setup is just going to give you a rundown of all the temperatures that we selected. Okay. All done with scheduling. So vacation mode, really simple. You just go in and plan a vacation. Tell it a day and a time that you're leaving, what you want the temperature to do while you are away. So typically when we're gone for long periods of time, uh, we can go a little bit wider bands on what we would normally do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, to help conserve some energy and save some money. Uh, and then it asks a day and a time that you come home. And then it gives you just a, a breakdown of it and then you can save it. Of course, in this instance, we're not going on a vacation, so we're just gonna cancel but that would be how you'd plan a vacation. The other thing to keep in mind is with the mobile app, as long as you have power and internet at your home and you have internet access on your uh, mobile device, then you can control this from anywhere and you could come in and make these changes even while you're gone. Reminders, so this will be set up to give you a reminder to change your media filter every six months and your humidifier water panel should be changed every year. So those reminders will pop up in your email as well as in the lower right hand corner of the screen here. Operating status just tells you what the equipment's doing. Function is heat because we're in heat mode right now. Of course the air conditioning is off. Gas heat is running at 52% of its capacity. And fan is on, humidifier is not running because we don't have a demand for humidity in the home right now. <clears throat> Next thing in here is accessory status. So this just tells you uh, your filter and humidifier. This is based off of time, but it can sense when the filter is getting plugged up. The evolution system is capable of measuring its own static pressure, so it will know when the filter is starting to get plugged up. So even if it's before six months, it'll let you know. And then temperature control status just tells you, a, gives you a snapshot of what it's trying to do. Actual temperature in the home is 68 and we're trying to heat to 70, so it's got the arrows indicating that it's working on getting it to that temperature. In the main screen where I first started out, notice how this has gone down to 48% from 52. The closer it gets to its set temperature, it's going to start staging itself down and that's because we want the temperature to come up evenly. We don't want to just shoot for the moon and then overshoot our target. So this system's smart enough to start staging itself down as we get close to our target. So that way we can keep the home consistent and comfortable throughout. <clears throat> Display has a few different options. You can change from Fahrenheit to Celsius if you like. Backlight levels you can change. Some people when they sleep or when it's dark they want it a little bit dimmer, not as bright. So you can change those settings to your liking. Uh, sound settings, all that changes is the beeping sound as I'm touching the screen. Um, and then the last thing would be to activate a screen lock. It's going to ask you to confirm yes or no. So you can lock that if you're wiping the screen down uh, so you aren't ch changing any settings. Energy tracking, so this is the um, kind of nice little tool that's built into the thermostat I was talking about earlier. We can use this to really fine tune the system and get the maximum energy savings. So one of the first things you want to do is make sure you're on the right fuel type. So in your home or in natural gas, you'll take your utility bill and you type in what you pay per kilowatt hour of electricity and then per therm of natural gas. So those numbers you can find right on your utility bill. Save those and then we can go into view energy usage. And this will give us a day by day breakdown of how much it's costing to run the system. So if we want to change temperatures while we're gone, maybe we want to spread them out a little farther. Um, what I would do is I would change it, let it run for a couple of weeks, and then watch the monthly usage and see where we're trending. You know, is it costing us more money or less money? The thing to keep in mind with that is when you are adjusting and trying to fine tune your system, if we get a 30 below zero spell for a few days, that's obviously going to affect uh, how much the system is running and how much it's going to cost. So you kind of want to make those adjustments on similar weeks or similar days anyway. Um, so it gives us a cost breakdown, energy consumption breakdown, and like I said we can do daily, monthly, or even yearly usage. So this is really just a nice feature to help uh, with energy savings and to keep your home comfortable and uh, as efficient as we can. 
date and time, so that's just the same menu that comes up if we touch it from the main screen, so we've already gone through that. Service menu, there's a little bit of information in. By the time I'm done setting this up, this will have Haley Comfort Systems information logged into it, so if there is a problem with the system, not only will we get an email at our office, but it'll have our name and number right here at the thermostat, so in case um, you lost the number or need to know how to get a hold of us, it'll be built into the thermostat. Model and serial numbers are in here. There's more stuff in here for service technicians or uh, anybody like that. Um, so it's really not a menu that we're going to need a whole lot. As I said before, there's a micro SD port on the bottom. We can upload a photo. So you can do that and that'll show up on the background. Wireless setup. So we enable the Wi-Fi. And then the first thing we're going to do is set up a Wi-Fi connection, and then we'll scan for the connection. Once we find it, you type in your password, and then it'll connect to the Wi-Fi. <clears throat> then what I usually do is I'll take a screenshot or a, a photo of the uh, registration information, because then when you go to register your equipment online and set up your account on the Bryant server, we'll need this information as one of the first steps. Weather forecast, that'll become available once the Wi-Fi is set up. You enter in your zip code, and then off of the server, based on the zip code, it gives you a weather forecast, a five-day weather forecast um, that you can use. Uh, know that when the system is making decisions on staging, it is taking a live temperature reading on the outdoor unit. It's not using the information gathered from the server. So there actually is a temperature sensor out at the air conditioning unit. So uh, that is a live reading. <clears throat> Sensors is the last thing. Home occupancy setup is the only option in there. Comes factory enabled, and that's right here. So this is watching for motion in the house. What can happen is if this is not a high traffic area, this will actually revert to an away temperature or keep the house at a, either a cooler or warmer temperature, depending on whether it's heating or cooling season, if it doesn't sense any activity. Um, if it's a nuisance, you are able to disable it, uh, but for the time being, we'll leave that enabled because it is a nice way that if we forget to change the temperature when we leave, it's a nice way that this helps us conserve some money and energy at the same time. And that is your new Evolution controller. Back here at the main screen where we started out, as I said, this outside temperature is a live reading. It's not based off of what information on the server. Once Wi-Fi was set up, uh, this red X would go away. If these bars are white, that means that we have Wi-Fi connection and we are connected to the server. If these bars are yellow, that would mean we have Wi-Fi, but we are not communicating with the server. And then, of course, the red X means that there is no Wi-Fi available or it isn't set up yet. And then the last thing is it does show gas heating here, so it does tell you a little snapshot of what the system's doing even as you pass by. So.